Let's talk Ryzen 9000 and Zen 5 and all the performance. We decided that we wanted to cover a CPU we thought would be the most interesting, the Ryzen 7 9700X. The reason is fairly simple. The Ryzen 7 7700X for me was one of the more interesting Zen 4 parts and the 9700X shares a lot of similarities except that the 9700X is a 65 watt part not a 105 watt part like the 7700X. The other thing is, these are the chips that real people can afford, but that's not really the point of this video at all. I wanted to purely focus on the AM5 Ryzen 7 lineup because if I'm being honest, 13th and 14th gen Intel chips just aren't that interesting to me. But let's start off by getting the biggest thing out of the way with the Ryzen 7 9700X, the price. The AMD Ryzen 7 9700X is going to be around 359 US dollars when it launches. As for its specs, the 9700X is an 8-core 16-threaded CPU with a base clock of 3.8 GHz and it should boost to around 5.5 GHz. The most interesting thing about the 9700X is that this chip right here is a 65-watt chip. For use cases like building a high-performance small form factor PC with low power consumption and for something to have low thermal output, this looks like it's going to be one of the more interesting CPUs to consider. The TDP is one thing though. I ran a one hour Cinebench stress test to see what the deal with power consumption was. And over that hour, I saw it pulling 64 watts across all cores and 88 watts for the entire package, which is just about the first time I've seen power figures on paper line up with our testing. Which leads us into Cinebench 2024 testing. In Cinebench 2024 multi-core, we see the 9700X scoring 1,163 points. This puts it at about the 7700X and 7800X 3D, but falling just shy of CPUs like the 13600K and the 14600K for comparison. But single core performance is a completely different story. This puts it well beyond the 7700X and even the 7800X 3D. It even puts it beyond the 13900K and 14700K, but only marginally. 2% faster in multi-core and 10% in single core is nothing to phone home about. Just saying. What I thought was interesting was a CPU-based benchmark I have used many times, the Linux kernel compile test. In this test, we compiled the Linux 6.8 kernel from source using the Pharonix test suite. Since I've been playing around with the 7700X and the 7800X 3D quite a bit for this video, I wanted to know which was the fastest and the 9700X comes out on top here in code compilation. Not only that, it's nine seconds faster than the 7700X and 14 seconds faster than the 7800X 3D. To be honest, I was surprised that the 7800X 3D wasn't faster and I tested this a whole bunch of times and that's what it spat out. The next thing was knowing what 3D performance was like without any restrictions using the RTX 4090 Founders Edition. And before you ask, the 7700 is absent from all of our testing because it's in Claire's PC and I'm not pulling apart her PC for a video because she uses that to work. We did all of the testing with PBO both enabled and disabled and we didn't see a gain or loss with having PBO on and off, so we turned it on. We tested everything with the same kit of G-Skilled Triton Z Neo at 6,000 mega transfers on the same Gigabyte X670E Aorus masterboard with the same cooler. I decided to do all the testing a little bit differently this time. I decided to run all of the tests at their lowest setting at 1080p and 1440p. Here's why. With GPUs like the RTX 4090, we're quite CPU bound at both 1080p and 1440p, and I was curious. I also wanted to see what the difference was with something like the 7700X and the 7800X 3Ds. Remember guys, I don't care much about Intel chips at the moment for one really selfish reason. My current gaming PC uses a 13700KF and I wanna build my new gaming PC and my next gaming PC with an AMD CPU. That's why I wanted to do a lot of this testing. Let's start off with Counter-Strike 2. There's a really good repeatable benchmark in the Steam Workshop that we use for all the testing, and I'll link it below if you're interested. At 1080p, it's obvious that the 7800X 3D is going to be the best choice here. What I wasn't anticipating was that the 7700X is actually faster than the 9700X, with even the 1% lows being higher than the 9700X. For validation, I did retest this a whole bunch of times 
making sure the memory and the timings were set properly. And this is what I kept seeing. To be fair, at such high frame rates, you wouldn't even notice that much of a difference, but those are the numbers we recorded. At 1440p, the gap was closed a little with the difference between the 7700X and the 9700X being about three FPS for both the average frame rate and the 1% lows. I'm fairly surprised with how well the 7700X still fares. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, this benchmark is quite old now, but the great thing about this one is that for CPU based benchmarks, it does a great job of exposing weaknesses. Once again, no surprises here with the 7800X3D being the fastest part here. What is interesting is the fact that unlike Counter-Strike 2, the 9700X is faster than the 7700X in both the average frame rate and the 1% lows. Jumping over to 1440p, we're seeing the 9700X be faster than the 7700X by single frame both ways, with the 9700X being one frame faster on average and 1% slower in the 1% lows. What's more surprising is that the 7800X 3D is faster at 1440p than it is at 1080p. On to Cyberpunk 2077, again, no surprises with the 7800X 3D being the fastest chip at 1080p. What's surprising though is that the 7700X is once again faster than the 9700X by about 5 frames on average, and the 7700X having higher 1% lows too. At 1440p, we're seeing the same pattern again with the 7700X being faster on average. The last time we saw something like this was when the Pentium 4 came out and the Pentium 3 was fast in some tasks, but I'll come back to that. I've got some thoughts on that. On to Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p, we see something really interesting here. This is something I tested quite a few times to validate this result. The average frame rate with the 9700X versus the 7700X has the 9700X being one frame slower, but the 1% low, which is a, probably a more important metric for this comparison, is almost 60 frames per second different. This is also echoed in the result with the 7800X3D. This is probably to do with the drastic change in architecture. As mentioned earlier, I've got some thoughts on this. At 1440p, we get close results across the board between these three chips, with the standout being the 1% lows on the 7700X, while the 7800X3D and the 9700X both have very similar 1% lows. The difference between the 7700X and the other two parts is about 60 frames per second. Finally, onto a game I've personally sunk hundreds of hours into, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. This one is fairly interesting because this game is quite sensitive to CPU clock speeds. At 1080p, we're seeing the average frame rate between the 7700X and the 9700X be very close, with the 7800X3D easily outpacing both, but the 1% lows on the 9700X are higher than the 7700X. At 1440p, we see the 7700X and the 9700X be neck and neck with their average frame rates, with the 1% lows being about six frames faster in favor of the 9700X. Lastly, I was curious about the integrated GPU performance. Spoiler alert, they're both bad, but I had to know. At 720p low in Counter-Strike 2, the 7700X is much faster than the 9700X. At 1080p low, the 7700X is also much faster. This is one of those tests that I honestly thought would be funny to run and maybe not put into the video at all, but it turns out it's not funny at all. I also tested this with Modern Warfare 3 just to see what the deal was. At 1080p lowest and 720p lowest, we're seeing the same thing being echoed here. It's strange, but that's the reality of the situation. The truth is you're not buying these CPUs for their integrated graphics performance. It's there just in case your system isn't posting. We can draw a few conclusions for the AMD Ryzen 7 9700X. First of all, it's new and new is always better, right? Wrong. While the 9700X does have a few benefits like reduced power consumption at a lower overall TDP, the labeling with the new Zen 5 chip seems to be a little bit off. This being an XQ, it is strange to see that this chip right here is a 65 watt chip, but we did see that with the 5700X, but considering this is a replacement for the 7700X, the only benefit I can see here is 
power consumption and thermal output. The other thing is the 9700X is really more in line with something like the Ryzen 7 7700. Although I physically couldn't include the 7700 in any of our testing because it's in Claire's PC, I'm not pulling that apart. It's clear that this chip here is more akin to the 7700 and not the 7700X. With saying all that, I'm not sure if any of you guys remember this, but as for comparing some of the results between Zen 4 and Zen 5, we've seen this before and we saw it a long time ago. And that was with the difference between Pentium 3 and Pentium 4. With some Pentium 3 chips being faster at some things than the Pentium 4 and the Pentium 4 being faster than the Pentium 3 with others proving that in fact, the older chip was better value at the time. The thing is when someone like AMD makes a big architectural change, like what we're seeing with Zen 5, it can take some time for those changes to either be optimized for or for them to be iterated on at all. That said, given what I learned about testing this 9700X and the current pricing being around 225 US dollars for the 7700X, I think you're out of your mind if you wanted to buy this right now, given the difference in the performance is so close and almost negligible. Not only that, the launch price for this chip here, the 7700X was lower. And on top of that, <laughs> this is the funniest thing. The average price for the 7800X 3D is 295 US dollars right now. And by all accounts, this is the fastest CPU for gaming right now. Not to mention that, the only thing that is really going for the 9700X is power consumption. However, if you're looking at power consumption on AM5, or you're looking for something that has similar specs to this, the 7700 is still worth considering because it can be had for as little as 195 US dollars right now. The 9700X is not a bad CPU by any means, but this thing is far too expensive for what you're getting. I guess if you're compiling Linux kernels and doing Cinebench runs all day, it could remotely make sense. Otherwise, I'd say skip the 9700X for now. That is until I can guarantee this will be cheaper. I'd say wait till it's about 100 US dollars cheaper and it would be worth its weight in gold, which isn't that much because I don't know how much gold they use in CPUs anymore. <laughs>